Chapter 25 Montpressem Having neutralized the enemy ship, which had come to a halt to repair the grave damage inflicted by the grenades of skillfully launched by Sandokan, the Prahu, under the power of her immense sails, immediately sailed off, moving at a speed that would have drawn the envy of the fastest clippers of Europe and Asia. Exhausted by the excitement, Mariana had retired to her cabin. Most of the crew had headed off to rest, going below now that the ship was out of danger. Yanez and Sandokan, however, remained on the bridge. Sitting on the stern railing, they chatted calmly, glancing towards the east from time to time, their eyes resting on a thin plume of smoke. "'An excellent shot, my friend,' said Yanez. "'She won't bother us again, and it'll be quite a while before she reaches Victoria. "'Do you think Lord Gwynoc sent her after us?' "'I doubt it, Yanez,' Sanokan replied. "'He couldn't have had the time to inform the governor of our escape. "'That ship's probably been searching for us for the past several days. "'Word must have spread that we'd landed on Labuan. "'I can't imagine he'll leave it be now that we have Mariana. "'I doubt it. I know how tenacious and vindictive he is. "'We'll have to prepare ourselves for a formidable attack. "'It won't be long in coming.' You really think they'll attack our island? I'm certain of it. Lord James is incredibly wealthy and has a lot of influence. He'll rally the governor to his cause. They'll arm the fleet and any other ship they can find. Mark my words, it won't be long before a flotilla appears off the coast of Montpressem. What are we going to do? Fight our last battle. Our last? Why do you say that, Sandokan? I'm hanging up my sword, Yanez, sighed the Tiger of Malaysia. The sea has been a fine stage for my battles, but now, alas, those days have come to an end. Ah, Sandokan! What can I do, Yanez? It was so written. The love of the golden-haired young woman conquered the pirate of Montpressem. The thought of hanging up my sword, of bidding good-bye to these lands after all we've done, fills me with great sadness. Yet I must do so. No more battles, no more boardings. My vendettas have come to an end. Ah, believe me, Yanez, my heart breaks at the thought the tiger will soon vanish from these waters, that my island and this sea will soon be ruled by others. And our men? If they so desire, they'll follow their captain's example and bid Montpressem good-bye, Sandokan said sadly. And after so much splendor, we'll just abandon our island and leave it to its fate? Yes, Yanez. Poor Montpressem, Yanez exclaimed sadly. I love that small patch of land. And you think I don't? My heart cringes at the thought I may never see it again. If I could cry, my cheeks would be bathed in tears. It's fate. We must resign ourselves, Yanez. Let's not dwell on the past. Yet I cannot accept it, Sandokan. To see our power vanish in an instant after so many battles, after all the sacrifices, after all the rivers of blood it cost us, Fate has decreed it so, said Sandokan dully. Or more precisely, the love of a young woman, replied Yanez. Had she never appeared, the tiger of Malaysia's mighty roar would have echoed over the sea to the shores of Labuan, making the British and the Sultan of Aruni tremble for many long years to come. You're right, my friend, Sandokan said. That young woman has dealt Montpressem a fatal blow. Had I never seen her, who knows, our flag may have flown triumphantly over these waters for many more years but it's too late to sever the ties binding us. Had it been any other woman, the very thought of our power being threatened would have driven me away from her. But I would die if I were never to see Mariana again. This passion burning within me is too strong to put out. Ah, if she desired to stay, if she were not horrified by war and bloodshed, how I'd make Montpressem's star shine. I'd give her a throne. But how can we fight against fate? We'll go to Montpressem, fight our last battle, then leave the island and sail away. Where is Sandokan? I'm not y sure yet, Yanez. We'll go wherever she wants, far from these shores, so that, so far that we'll never hear speak of them again. If I remain in these waters, I'm not sure I'd be able to resist the temptation of returning to Montpressem. Well, so be it. We'll fight our last battle, then sail off to who knows where, Yanez said resignedly. It's going to be an awful battle, Sandokan. His lordship's going to fight to the death. 
He'll discover that the tiger's den is impregnable. No one has ever been clever enough to set foot on my island, and he isn't going to be the exception. Wait until you see the defense I have planned against his flotilla. They won't crush us. We'll fortify the village so it can withstand the worst shelling imaginable. The tiger is yet to be tamed, and his roar will dismay our enemies. And what if we're outnumbered? Sanokan, you know the Dutch have allied with the British to battle piracy. They could unite their two fleets and deal more Prasema a mortal blow. If defeat seems imminent, I'll set fire to our powder supply and we'll be blown up along with our village and Prahus. I won't allow them to take Mariana. I couldn't live without her. I'd rather die at her side than see her torn away from me. Let's hope it doesn't come to that, Sandokan. The Tiger of Malaysia lowered his head and sighed, then after a few minutes of silence added, Yet I have a bad feeling about all this. What do you mean? Yanez asked anxiously. Sandokan did not reply. He leaned on the bulwark and turned his face to the wind, deep lines now furrowing his brow. Heavy sighs frequently escaping his lips. Such a fate, and all because of one young woman, he murmured. He was going to give up everything for her, everything, even the sea he loved and called his own. It would fall to those men he had fought so relentlessly for the past twelve years, to the very men that had stolen his throne and hurled him into the mud, the men that killed his mother, brothers, sisters. Ah, you're uneasy, he continued, looking at the sea as it roared beneath his prahu's bow. You do not wish to be ruled by the British. You have no desire for the peace that reigned over you before my arrival. I too am suffering, but of what value are my protests? The divine young woman is worth more to me than I, than all that I would lose. He brought his hands to his brow, as if to dispel those tormenting thoughts then stood up and walked slowly to the cabin. At the sound of Mariana's voice, he came to an abrupt stop. "'No, no!' gasped the young woman. "'Leave me! I want no part of you! I love the Tiger of Malaysia. Why do you try to take me from him? Go, William! I hate you! Go! Go!' "'She's dreaming,' murmured Sanokan. "'Sleep safely, my darling. You run no danger here.' I am watching over you now, and they'll have to cross my dead body before I'll let them take you from me. He opened the cabin door and peered inside. Mariana was in fact sleeping, breathing heavily, shaking her arms as if trying to dispel a bad dream. The pirate looked at her tenderly, watching her sleep, then silently withdrew into his cabin. Having maintained a good speed throughout the night, the Prahu greeted the dawn just sixty miles from Mumprasen. The crew was beginning to think their safety was assured when the Portuguese spotted a thin plume of smoke on the horizon. Uh-oh, he exclaimed. Could that be another cruiser? As far as I know, there aren't any volcanoes around these parts. He picked up a spyglass and scrambled up the mainmast, eyes riveted on the column of smoke that kept drawing nearer. By the time he had climbed back down, his brow had darkened. What's the matter, Yanez? Sanokan asked, having just arrived on deck. I've spotted a gunboat, little brother. Not much of a threat. I know she won't dare attack us. Those ships are never armed with more than a cannon. It's something else. What exactly? She's coming from the west. Maybe even from Montpresem. Oh! I hope our island hasn't been attacked during our absence. Montpresem attacked? Asked a silvery voice behind them. Sandokan turned quickly and found Mariana standing before him. "'Ah, it's you, my darling,' he exclaimed. "'I thought you were still asleep. "'I just got up moments ago. "'What were you talking about? "'Are we in danger?' "'No, Mariana,' Sandokan replied. "'However, we are a little concerned. "'We just spotted a gumbo approaching from the west. "'Montpresem lies in that direction. "'Do you think she's attacked your village?' "'Yes, but she couldn't have acted alone. "'A volley from our cannons would have sufficed to sink her.' "'Ah!' Yanis exclaimed, taking two steps forward. What is it? The gunboat has spotted us and is changing course. She's heading towards us. She's coming to spy on us, Sandokan said. The pirates had not been mistaken. The gunboat, a small vessel perhaps no more than a hundred tons, armed with a cannon, advanced to within a thousand meters, then tacked about but did not sail off, a plume of smoke marking her presence as she kept to within ten miles of Sandokan and his men.
The pirates gave her little thought, knowing the small vessel would not have dared attack them, their prahu having enough artillery to hold off four such ships. Towards midday, a pirate who had scrambled up the foremast to fasten a rope to the yard arm spotted Montpresem, the dreaded lair of the Tiger of Malaysia. Their safety assured, Sando Cananianes breathed a sigh of relief and escorted Mariana to the bow. There, where the sky met the sea, they could just make out a long, dark strip. Eyes fixed upon it, they watched as little by little it became a splendid, verdant green. It won't be long now, Sandokan exclaimed anxiously. What do you fear? asked Mariana. I don't know, but something has happened. I can feel it. Is the gunboat still following us? Yes, there's still some smoke to the east of us, replied Yanez. A bad sign. I fear as much, Sandokan. See anything else? Yanez raised his spy glass and carefully studied the island for several minutes. Our ships are still anchored in the bay. Sandokan let out a sigh of relief. Excellent, he murmured. Driven by a good wind, the Prahu arrived to within a few miles of the island in less than an hour, then tacked towards the bay that stretched before the village. She was soon close enough to the shore to allow her crew to make out the island's fortifications, long houses, and storage huts. Atop the cliff from the roof of the large hut the tiger called home, they spotted the pirate's flag, fluttering boldly in the wind, but the village was empty and there appeared to be far fewer Prahus resting at anchor. As they drew nearer, they saw the long houses bore traces of fire, and several of the ramparts had been gravely damaged. Ah! Sanokan exclaimed, clutching his heart. My worst fears have been realized. Our island's been attacked! You're right, Yanez murmured gloomily. How awful! said Mariana, struck by the pain she saw in Sanokan's face. Your enemies have taken advantage of your absence. Yes, replied Sanokan, shaking his head sadly. Once feared and unassailable, my home has been violated. My power, my fame, will soon be no more.